Welcome to Heidi Relationships. Today, we'll read some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and maybe leave a comment down below. That would help the channel a lot. Thank you very much in advance. The first one is titled, Dead Bedroom in Recovery, But I Can't Seem to Let Go. Just so you are not confused, DB means dead bedroom. Background. After nearly seven years of dead bedroom and countless talks, I, 32F, told him, 32M, in September that I would like us to consider opening our marriage by June 2020. I was eight months pregnant at the time and hence the future timeline. The issue in our DB was not just the low frequency but also the fact that he has very rarely come through PIV with me, probably only around the time when we conceived our kids, never through oral and the only way he could finish was via hand, which left me feeling more like a self-pleasuring prop and massively ducked with my sexual self-image. Intercourse meant kissing, five minutes of PIV in missionary and finishing him with by hand. Current situation. Since the September talk he has come out to me about his near daily self-pleasuring habit over the entirety of our relationship. This has left me extremely resentful that he knowingly hurt me all these years by choosing his hand over me, while making me believe some or the other bullcrap reason every time we had a talk about why we weren't having enough intercourse. After the talk about opening the marriage, once I had the baby and was six weeks clear from my C-section in December, we have been having intercourse almost every day and seem to have gone up a level in terms of both exploring each other sexually as well as intimacy. He has also started to tackle head-on issues he has had with hypersensitivity of glands which he believes made him choose self-pleasuring as his preferred sexual outlet all these years. My issue is that I am feeling unable to let go of the resentment and anger of being cheated of the last seven years. That if he had told me about the truth in any of our earlier countless talks we could have worked on it and avoided years of DB that completely ducked me mentally and emotionally. I am also finding it difficult to trust what he tells me these days as I am afraid if I will yet again learn something new the next time we have a talk. He has also taken to complimenting me a lot which he insists is genuine and that he was never able to vocalize it before, but it simply makes me even more resentful for some reason. I am committed to making the marriage work, if I start writing about what a truly equal partner and great parent he is, that would be several times the size of this post. He is also committed to fixing the DB and has promised that it is not hysterical bonding this time. So how do I restore my sanity, start trusting him again and let go of the anger and resentment so that we can fix this DB in our marriage? A user in the comments said, if possible, is marriage therapy an option? My husband and I started to recover our dead bedroom in November of 2018. We still had so many communication issues and we did not know how to fight well when we disagreed. We started seeing a counselor in October and in that short time, we have come so far in regaining trust and communicating in a healthy way. If anything, check out the Gottman Institute website. Amazing resources for making your marriage stronger. Our bedroom was very, very dead as in we had intercourse about six times in 11 years. Yeah. We've been married for almost 16 now and things are the best they have ever been emotionally and sexually. It's a lot of work to forgive and come to terms with the causes of a DB. I imagine it will take you a long time to get over it. Be patient with yourself and with him. You are on the right path. Anything worth doing is not easy. You got this. The next one is titled, Recovering DB, But I Can't Come Now. I realize it's a long shot but really hoping someone in a recovering DB can relate and offer some advice. My husband has been committed to our DB recovery. He has resolved his physical issues, has lost over 20 pounds and is fitter, and has been really trying to improve his communication. He also went to therapy for a couple of sessions. We have intercourse three to four times a week on average. This has been going on for nearly six months now so doesn't seem like hysterical bonding. I have had feelings of anger and resentment over the last years but have worked on my side too to get over it and focus on our future together. I found myself getting irritated at him frequently, on non-major issues, but am really trying as well to communicate better and be more patient. Overall, I'd say we have a healthy, strong marriage. 
Issue at hand. I am not able to orgasm during intercourse now. This was never the case before, even though the frequency was an issue earlier. The intercourse is good, and he really cares for my pleasure. We've tried longer, shorter foreplay, different positions, couples toys, he eats me out often too. But I never come now. It is still pleasurable, so I enjoy the intercourse, but I'm starting to get terrified of never having an orgasm during intercourse again. I can still orgasm easily using a rabbit, which I don't really use much by the way. It's incredibly frustrating, earlier the intercourse was infrequent, but I would still come. Now the DB is resolved but a switch has seemingly gone off and suddenly killed my ability to orgasm during intercourse. The next one is titled, Update to Recovering DB, Not a Happy Ending. Nine months after our talk I am finally leaving. Right away after the talk we had revived our bedroom and I truly believed that we were on track for a strong, intimate marriage. I was still angry but working on moving on from our past issues. He was initiating regularly and had overcome his death grip issues. We were doing couples counseling together. But it turns out the issues went much deeper than just a dead bedroom. My husband is a compulsive liar. He was lying to me throughout our seven years, on things both big and small. He was watching adult videos and pleasuring himself to it every day, instead of intercourse with me, and lying about it whenever I tried to discuss our dead bedroom situation. The true extent of his addiction only came to light in trickles over the last few months. He was also an online troll, hiding behind anonymity to post vile, cowardly comments. He also lied about his online accounts, his food habits, his past experiences, on issues both trivial and relationship ending. He even continues to lie while we were in counseling and working on his lying issue. We have two kids, a two-year-old and a seven-month-old. We will still be co-parenting as he really wants to stay involved in the kid's life, and they adore him too. He promises he is genuinely going to change now, and I wish him the best for it, but will not be a part of that journey. Me, I am ready to fly now. There are still tons of anger, regret, hurt, resentment, and I must admit also revulsion towards him. But I count all the positives in my life too. I recently turned 33 and am just starting what are considered the best decades of life. I work in a top field that pays extremely well and enables me to take care of myself and the kids without any support from my husband, although he will continue to contribute. I am actually 10 pounds lower now than my pre-pregnancy weight, having worked hard at it during the lockdown. While I was normal weight and good shape before too, I am definitely in greater shape now. I have support from family who will help in taking care of our kids once the lockdown is fully over. And I live in the greatest city in the world. And while I will not be looking to date immediately, both due to the lockdown and the fact that my kids are very small, I have gotten started on apps to get myself out there and start meeting more people, meetups and activities rather than hookups at this stage. Am I nervous for the future? Yes. I have only ever had sex with my husband, and the thought of being with someone new does make me anxious. But am I ready to finally put myself first and pursue my happiness? Also, yes. The next one is titled, My Boyfriend, 18M, Drove Away, 18F, When He Saw My Wheelchair For The First Time. My boyfriend, 18M, and I, 18F, have been together since January of 2020. He is, well maybe was, always an amazing boyfriend. We have not seen each other in person since the end of last year due to travel restrictions and safety precautions. In March of this year, I was paralyzed in a car accident, and now use a wheelchair, and he wasn't able to come visit me, only my brother was able to, though we did FaceTime often. Today, we were able to see each other as he was passing through my state to visit his grandparents, his grandpa is dying. He was going to come to my apartment to pick me up so we could go somewhere. He saw my wheelchair and his facial expression was weird. I found it difficult to transfer into his SUV as it was very high up. Jeep Wrangler with the big wheels, so I asked him to help me. He said I can do it on my own since I can transfer to my own car, Mini Cooper, and he can't be my own personal servant, 
I never treat him like one, this was just one difficult task I needed help with. Then, he drove away. I don't know what to think. I know he is under a lot of stress with his grandpa dying and one of his cousins that he was quite close with recently passed away so it may have been him just overwhelmed with everything that has happened. But at the same time, he shouldn't have done what he did even though I don't know fully why he did that. How should I feel about this, I am honestly torn. My brother said dump him, but one of my friends said to talk to him about it. Should I talk to him about this? How do I proceed? Do I break up with him? What do I do? A user in the comments said, I have a close loved one who is permanently disabled and uses mobility devices. You have a beautiful life ahead of you, but not with this man. This man just showed you who he is. You have not seen him since March, and he blew you off and wouldn't help you with a simple request. Know your worth. You wouldn't treat an acquaintance this way, let alone a loved one. Again, know your worth. Another user said, I'm sorry that all of this happened to you up. It seems like your boyfriend was living in denial about your accident until he couldn't avoid it anymore. I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt that between the stress of his grandpa dying, he wasn't ready to also face your new reality. But he may also ultimately end up not being the right guy for you. Only time will tell but you should certainly talk to him about it. Express your feelings and ask for his explanation. The next one is titled, Update my boyfriend, 18M, drove away, 18F, when he saw my wheelchair for the first time. Lots of people have asked me for an update, so here I am. Long story short, he is an ex-boyfriend now. I did some thinking and decided to break things off, so I broke up with him over text. He tried to explain himself. He said he panicked when he saw me and didn't know what to do but I didn't think I could get past that incident. He begged me to take him back, but all his efforts were in vain. In the end, he ended up blocked. Now, I'm enjoying the single life. The next one is titled, Should I, 23F, tell my BF, 24M, about other guys hitting on me? For clarification, I moved to a new city a few months ago and met my BF. He's amazing. I'm so happy with him. However, I'm still trying to make friends out here, and it seems like every time I find myself becoming close with a group, one or several of the guys will come onto me over text. I ride motorcycles, and this is a common way I make friends but it's a very male-dominated activity. After one of the guys asked me to dinner over text, I showed my BF because I didn't want him to think I was hiding anything. I've since brought my BF to hang out and meet everyone, and now one of the other guys texted me, I know you have a BF. He's so lucky to have you. But, insert flirty text here. I would rather my BF find out about this from me, but I also don't want to make him feel worried about other guys. Should I even bother telling him, or just handle it on my own? I don't want to lose this friend group, but I also don't want to make my boyfriend uncomfortable. Edit to clear a few things up. I'm not randomly giving my number to men, I met this group on a motorcycle ride and we exchanged info to coordinate meetups. Only one guy is currently an issue with this group. The first guy who asked me to dinner politely backed off when I said I had a BF. He even told me to bring my BF on a group ride, which I did. This second guy actually met my BF and tried flirting after the fact. I shut it down, hasn't been an issue again, but it's only been like 24 hours. So who knows? I don't know if the group knows about this and I doubt they condone this behavior, there are two other women in the group. I choose my boyfriend over this riding group without hesitation. Stop saying I don't care about my BF. I obviously care enough to consult a bunch of internet strangers on how I can best handle this. Thanks to those of you with helpful, thought out messages. You helped me see that this bad apple of the group is not someone I want to spend time with. Someone who doesn't respect my relationship with my BF isn't a friend, they're in butthole. A user in the comments said, When you say that, it's hard to get mad at them, when they word inappropriate comments, you're signaling to your male friends that you're not against them flirting inappropriately with you. When you say, I don't want to lose this friend group, you're saying you'd rather have friends who disrespect you, 
your relationship than no friends at all. You've made it clear that maintaining a good relationship with your friends takes priority over your friends respecting your relationship. For that reason, it doesn't make sense at all to show your boyfriend the texts, as that will become obvious to him as well. As you continue to show him the times everybody is flirting with you, he will continue to resent you for being so open to those advances. So, either be a stronger-willed individual and stop the disrespect towards your relationship or lean into it and hide it from him. Another user said, I mean you really should think about how this group sees you. You may have good intentions, but do they have good intentions about you? You already know one of them wants you to cheat on your BF with him, and what happens if it's a few people that think that way? It seems like it could be a bad environment to be in and would inspire you to cheat on your boyfriend, even if you would never do that. So you need to be aware of the situations you put yourself in. Maybe this group is different and it's just the one douchey guy but just be careful with which type of people you associate with. And I'll tell my boyfriend if it was somebody I was in contact with, but if a guy catcalled at me on my bike, I would just ignore it and not tell my boyfriend. The next one is titled, Update, Should I, 23F, Tell My BF, 24M, About Other Guys Hitting On Me? First of all, thank you to everyone who took the time to read and respond to my post. What started as me wondering whether or not it was necessary to alert my BF of unwanted, but handled, flirtation from a guy friend turned into me re-evaluating that, friendship. Deets below. I ended up facetiming my boyfriend and telling him that this friend, we'll call him X, had blatantly admitted to flirting with me, after he met my BF, and that I was planning on ending the friendship. I sent BF screenshots and he was grateful that I told him, obviously disgusted by X, we both started laughing and talking crap on him since, yeah, the guy was being a poss flirting with me. He has a GF and knows I was taken. BF was also really sweet in consoling me because this was the first friend group I made in a new town, and it sucked to feel like I was losing that sense of belonging. Today, one of the other guys in the group, let's call him Y, asked if I was going to come hang out, and I told him what happened. Even though he's been best friends with X for years, he was pissed. Apparently X has asked Y to lie to X's girlfriend a lot, which Y thinks is shady. Y said he and the rest of the group would still love to hang out with me, and they'd let me know when X wasn't around. X asked me to hang out today, and I told him I didn't want to be friends anymore after his behavior, he disrespected my relationship and his own, and I don't stay friends with people like that. He apologized a bunch, said he didn't mean to come between me and my BF and that he respected my decision to not hang out with him anymore. Then he ended with, I was just being honest. There was no way in hell I was letting someone like you walk into my life and not at least try. Lol. Peace dude. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the relationship stories. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and write a comment. I really appreciate your support and it helps my channel so much. Thank you.